The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and there are two types of people in the world. Team Arduino for everything and should have used the 555. So today we're pitting both against each other by building a fun only project. We're building a desktop toy with a 555 and with an Arduino to find out what's better. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. You all know you can use an Arduino for thousands of projects. But did you also know that you can use a 555 timer for thousands of projects or even more? It's a circuit from the 70s and it's still in production today because it's crazy useful and versatile. Of course, a lot of people that see a simple Arduino project say, you could have built that with a 555 timer. And because it's often a bait if that project is really needed that way and if it shouldn't be done differently, let's build a fun only project. We're making a desktop toy, I think of a little racing game of some sort. And we're building that two times, one time with a 555 timer and the other one with a simple Arduino. And then we'll find out which version is better or not, or what's the difference, or what should you do, or should I have used the 555? Let's get started. What I want to do is like a little drag racing game where you have to control the gas of a car, like a mechanical thing that really moves on the track. You have a timer function that allows you to, let's say, have 10 seconds and you have to make it as far as you can. And if you just push too much on the gas, the car may run out of the track or may crash. So you have to be precise with your timing and get creative with your button taps to make it go as far as possible. The first part of the project is the same for both versions. We need a car. So what I decided to do is I used FreeCAD to draw up a chassis plate for a tiny, tiny car. It's not really a scale. It's, I think, 190 scale, really tiny. And because making very tiny gears is hard to make work, even with a resin printer, I tried that, trust me, I decided not to use a small motor and a lot of gearing. I used the biggest motor that I could fit on the car to make it crazy overpowered and make it worm driven. So I also drew up a worm drive. I used FreeCAD for that and the gear uh, workbench, which is crazy good. If you want to use gears, FreeCAD gear workbench. That's really a good program. And then I tried to combine it and try out how can I make this car move. I've used some 3D printed wheels and some wire for the axles. Put all the thing together with super glue and a little bit of hot glue. And I had to run the motor for some time to wear in the gears so they would fit pretty good. And on purpose I didn't make them like fit all the time. The shaft is a little bit wobbly the gear only engages after a few turns, which is not really more gear reduction, but it uh, offloads some motor load. So I um, don't run the risk of burning out the motor in case it stalls. And to give the wheels traction, I used a material called scale tube. Uh, that is basically a foam rubber in form of a little tube. And you can stretch it a little bit, put it over uh, some 3D printed wheels, and that makes pretty good grip with surfaces. So that's basically like a little tire that you would also have on slot cars. It's just smaller. Usually it's used in model making for all kinds of purposes. So now that we have the chassis of our car, we need to make it look like a car. And the only model of car that I could think of that this motor would actually fit the shape of it or kind of fit the shape of it is uh, definitely not a Defender, it's a Protector D110, let's call it like that. And I've made a 3D printed mold for that and vacuum formed it with a tiny vacuum forming machine. Uh, I've used several different materials for that and turns out while the bigger RC models are usually made from polycarbonate, in this case when it gets so small, PETG sheet works a lot better. 
so I've made it from PDG. The tiny car works exactly the same like a slot car. So it has some tiny bristles on the bottom that pick up the voltage from two voltage providing rails on the track. Uh, and these bristles are nothing else than just plain old solder wick. So I snipped that off, soldered it in place, and that provides our voltage to the car. Mini slot car, not a good one, but hey, it's a toy. So let's go on with making the track. For the track, I've used this particle board, which is actually the back wall of uh, cheap furniture. I got a lot of those. And what I basically did is make a groove in there. I've tried to use a Dremel, I've tried laser cutting, but in the end I had the best results with a little sharp tool and just made a groove by hand. And left and right of that groove will be our conductive traces and I've used copper tape for that because I think that's first easy to solder wires to and second I expect that to conduct pretty good in contact with my copper bristles. Using a variety of model making supplies that I had in my arsenal and some wasted 3D prints and some other project leftovers that I threw on there and just some plain old packaging materials I've made a little mountain scenery because as I've mentioned the car is a protector D110 so it's an off-road vehicle so hey maybe make it a mountain theme and I've also used some static grass put it on with my homemade static grass applicator that wasn't in a video if you want to see a video on how to make such one of these things pretty awesome you can see little sparks fly because that thing uses very high voltage to statically charge the little particles and make the grass stand up so it looks more realistic painted all that up then I made a frame uh, out of some leftover wood keep in mind I'm not a wood maker everybody else can do that a lot cleaner and nicer than me but it fits the purpose so i've made that frame painted it and mounted two buttons into it one button is for activating the timer the second button is the gas pedal now that we have a mountain scenery we need to make it come to life so we need a lot of electronics to control our buttons i've also added a little potentiometer in case i need to adjust a value for a resistor so I can exchange that and have it a little bit adjustable. I've also added a little port to make our power input. And I've decided to run this thing on 12 volts because in my experimentation at 12 volts, the motor twitches like crazy and that fits the drag racing theme. Also, as you can see, here's a little traffic light that indicates when we can start our journey. Also, these are failed 3D prints, so nothing goes to waste. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. Before I start with code or anything, and people say, you should have used a 555. Let's start with a 555 timer circuit. Here's the schematic. Welcome to my computer. And now we are looking at the schematic for the 555 timer circuit. So this in the middle is of course the 555 timer. It doesn't really matter which version you use. Uh, the only thing that matters is it should be tolerant to how many watts you want to put into it. But they behave the same. And so what we have here is a mono-stable multi-vibrator circuit. What does that mean? That means it waits for a trigger, then it goes into the unstable mode, it waits for a capacitor to discharge over a resistor, and when that happens, it goes back into the stable mode. That, that way, mono-stable thing. There's a learning circuits episode about that that explains it much better than me. So what uh, we have here is R1 is basically just a pull-up. C1 and R2 are responsible for the timing. C1 is the cap that gets discharged. R2 is the resistor it has to discharge through. So if you change those values, 
then you change the timing and you can calculate that timing uh, with some formulas that I won't go into it, but you can simply find them as one shot timer calculator or something else on the internet. For this one, we also use an LM8708 voltage regulator. That means it goes down from 12 volt to 8 volt because I encountered that this circuit works better at 8 or 9 volts than at 12 volts. Also, keep in mind that the output on pin 3 can supply a max current of 10 milliamps and this output goes high when the timer activates. That means we have to obey that current limit. If it would be the other way around, if it goes low when it activates, we could sync about 100 milliamps, but we can't. So what we have to do is use a transistor in between the relay because the relay coil will draw for sure more than 10 milliamps. So we use this relay and when that relay activates, it deactivates that LED that is connected to ground on the normally connected side. It switches over to the normally open side and then it activates the motor. And this is the second switch that allows us to give power to the motor. And that's basically it. Keep in mind also these 390 ohms as a current limiting resistor for my LED only are suitable for that special LED that I use because I use one that has a supply current of uh, supply voltage of five volts and the most normal LEDs run at two volts. So that's a special LED. If you use another one, you have to recalculate that current limiting resistor. And that is basically it. Keep in mind, you may need to adapt, adjust some of these values to make what you want to do with it. And it's pretty hard to debug such a circuit. But yeah, 555 timer does the job and no code required. In a lot of the videos that I saw with me before, I've used custom made PCBs, but this time let's do the complete opposite. Let's make the 555 IMA circuit even without breadboard, without perf board, let's make it free hand wired, only flying wires. Sorry for the OCD people, you're basically going to, it's not pleasant for you, but it's awesome for me. Thing with free wiring is if you make an error, it's hard to correct. So debugging this thing, that could be an issue. But let's try it out and see what we have to change to make this thing work. So the 555 timer variant didn't work right off the gate. I had to do a lot of troubleshooting with it. The schematic you saw is my second iteration of that. The first one exceeded the current limit of the output pin which made it go up in flames or in magic smoke, as the specialists say. Here's a little microscope uh, picture of how that looks when something let out the magic smoke. That tiny hole, that's where it escaped. I had that two times happen to me. First for exceeding the current limits, second uh, for using a wall ward that didn't provide what it says. So you shouldn't run it on 12 volts right off the bat. I've restricted it to 8 volts and used 12 volts only to drive the motor. So the relay switches to 12 volts. That worked pretty good. How's the usage? You push the first button that activates the traffic light, basically activates the relay, and then you can provide current with the other button. So the 555 timer does the timing. It takes 10 seconds. That is a value that you can calculate with the resistor and the capacitor value that determines how fast that cap gets discharged. And that's basically your timing. So 555 timers, really great for timing. The circuit is by the way called a monostable multivibrator. If you want to know more about how these circuits work and what you can do with it, we have a really, really good resource on the learning circuit with Karen on the Element 14 community. There you can see a lot of projects with those. I saved the demonstration for the end because first we have to build the Arduino version. And I used the Arduino Nano Every just because I have it around and I haven't used it in a project before. But you can use that with any Arduino variant. So whatever you have or you want to use, you can do it that way. Let's take a look at the code. Now this is the code for my tiny slot racing game. First we have to define all the buttons, inputs and outputs, some variables and also some timing. 
variables. We declare inputs and outputs. In the setup function, we don't really need to start the millions function right now. I just did it for just to start it. <laughs> but in the void loop, there is the actual loop. Keep in mind, this is basically one loop nested into another loop. So on every loop begin, we read the button, then we know what start value is. If that button is low, start will be zero. And if that happens, we start the timer, deactivate the LED and change the state to one. That way we give the actual starting signal to the player. And while that state is wrong, this is where the second loop starts. We read if the second button got put low, which is power, we get a new time. We check if the time has expired. If not, we don't do anything. We just, according to the power state, put the relay on and off to provide power. But if that has expired, we just break that function and loop again. So that means as long as the, current, the time is not expired, we can provide power. But the moment the time is expired, we go back to the loop and we wait for a new start signal. And that's it. And that is basically exactly the same that the 555 timer does. So there's no point in making it more fancy because we want to compare those two. Of course, I have tested these one after the other and built them one after the other. But here is like a demonstration supercut of how they performed. And then we make the conclusion which one was better. Both versions did the job pretty much as they should. The 505 timer worked reliable, did 10 seconds. More or less, it was sometimes more like 11, sometimes 12 seconds. I think that depends a bit on the power supply. Maybe it sometimes sources more power or less, or maybe my motor drains the capacitor a little bit faster. That could be the variance, but it worked reliably all the time. Did it again and again, once the circuit was figured out. When it's not figured out, <laughs> it doesn't work at all. So if you want to do it with discrete logic, with a 555 timer, you have to spend some time in the design and once you got that, you got it. And also, if you make a lot of these, that might be a lot cheaper than using a microcontroller. The Arduino variant is a lot more flexible. If I want to change the interval, I can simply do that in code. It's just a line. If I want to change the behavior of the buttons, I can do that. It's just a line of code. On a point of assembling, the Arduino variant was a lot faster. I didn't have to debug a lot of electronics. I didn't have to be that uh, weary of current limits. The Arduino can provide a little bit more. It was easy to provide it with power. I just put the 12 volts in the V-in pin and the onboard regulator does the job of converting it to the five volts for the on, uh, Arduino on board by itself. I don't have to deal with that. I just flash some code and it works and I can change things afterwards. But both do the job and you can do that with a 5.5 timer and you can do it with an Arduino. The choice is yours. This is my DIY off-road drag racing desktop game powered by either an Arduino or a 5.5 timer, whatever you want. It's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to build. I've learned a ton about electronics and that's the main reason why you should build fun projects because First it's fun and second you learn a lot of stuff that is useful later on. But I also have my grabs with it because the picking up of the power, not very reliable. Those bristles wear out pretty fast and it always sparks. And that builds up a carbon film that hinders transmission of the power. So I have to clean the bristles and the track constantly to make it work again. So that's not the ideal solution. Maybe you have a better idea how we can provide car power to a tiny car that runs up and down the track. Let me know on the Element 14 community. And there's also the place where you can learn a lot about Arduinos and 555 timers and electronics in general. And I see you there. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. <laughs>